Is your nine to five job bringing you fulfillment and your desired financial freedom? Or would you like to become a full-time real estate investor? Well, if the answer to that question is yes, then you'll wanna check out this video with fellow investor, Evan McLeish, who just made the transition from being a full-time employee to being a full-time investor. There are many pitfalls when it comes to making this transition. So it's important that you know when and how you should make that decision. That's why Evan and I went through a step-by-step -step guide on how he was able to reach this goal. Stick around until the end of this video where Evan shares the most valuable piece of advice on how you can become a full-time real estate investor. Hey, what's up? It's Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars in net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Step one is to come up with a plan. Your plan should set out how much money you plan to earn, how long your plan should take you to implement, and the potential risks involved with that plan. These calculations should be done at the beginning, throughout your progress, and refined as things change. You know, I probably did those cash flow equations a thousand times in my head. Setting realistic expectations will help you achieve your plan with more accuracy and being willing to jump in and do whatever is necessary to get you closer to your goal will also aid in the efficiency of your plan. So a lot of this stuff to save money and just keep the ball rolling, you got to step in and kind of do it yourself. For instance, if you need to replace $100,000 of annual income and you want to do that in three years time, you should build a plan around both of those numbers that is realistic and also takes into consideration things that could potentially change either in your local real estate market or in your living situation. The second step is choosing your investing strategy or strategies. I mean, we, we started out with house hacking because it was cheaper, 5% mm -hmm. down, you can go in there, you can add a suite. There are so many different ways to make money as a real estate investor, but your focus should be to narrow down a strategy and work to create a system around that strategy in order to be able to build your portfolio. If your plan is to flip one property and see how it goes and then maybe do a buy and hold and then after that, maybe a rent to own and following that, you're gonna try house hacking, you will see slower progress. If you choose a strategy and perfect it, you will start to see savings with each individual transaction. Savings can be in the form of dollars but more than likely, they're more related to time savings and efficiencies you create with repetition. If your goal is to become a full-time investor, your focus should be on strategies that generate cash. That can be in the form of cash flow or it can also be in the form of lump sum cash payments. Evan focused on two strategies, house hacking and burring properties because of the unique ability with these two strategies to use the same capital over and over again and to start building cash flow. And a lot of it was, uh, yeah, so we didn't leave our money in turnkeys. And when you buy fixer uppers, they're cheaper. You know, at that point, we got into a little more creative financing and I had a few other properties. So we would buy that with a down payment and then raise the renovation funds or put a second mortgage on our other uh, building so we could have the cash. Using strategies like this allows you to keep acquiring properties and building your cash flow. If you want to learn more about house hacking, check out the video I did explaining this strategy in detail after you've watched this video. The third step is to make necessary sacrifices. Becoming a full-time real estate investor is not not an easy thing and it does take time. The more short-term sacrifices you're willing to make, the quicker you should be able to achieve your goal of quitting your job. Each individual will have a different threshold for the kind of sacrifices they are willing to make. But ask yourself, if making a short-term sacrifice will get you to your goal faster, if that's something that you'd be willing to do. Listen to some of the sacrifices Evan and his wife made to achieve their goals. My wife, Jody, for like two or three houses. I mean, she was living on plywood. She, she totally trooped through it. The other element that Evan contributes to his success is the fact that he stayed away from consumer debt items in order to strengthen his applications with the bank while he was working. What you want to do is stay away from consumer products. And because that really beats up your debt ratio. And when you're dealing with residential, that's what the banks are looking at. This can be incredibly difficult to maintain discipline on these items, as we often feel like rewarding ourselves for our hard work. But the reward will come when we can step away from our jobs, and that should be your main focus. Step four is adjusting your plan as necessary. Things will without a doubt come up, and changes to your plan may need to be made. By realizing when those changes need to happen and what you need to do, your new vision will become very clear if you're listening. When you have that long-term big picture uh, in your mind, I mean, that, that's a little easier. If the plan you are using suddenly doesn't work because of a shift in the market conditions, you need to change your plan. This may be more relevant once you've left your full-time position, but it can definitely come into play during as well. You know, COVID happened, right? And then interest rates dropped, everyone's buying houses for expensive amounts. So the fixer-upper I bought for 
285 three months ago is now 320. So now I, again, this goes to that lip and then I, I got to put this amount of money in for it to be worth over half a million places in this neighborhood have never been half a million before. So now I'm thinking, okay, I got to go out and find somebody and, and, you know, use a joint venture partner. I didn't feel comfortable saying, Hey, you're, we can do this, but that ARV is like unproven in a way. Step five is to plan for your post work life. Replacing your existing income may not be enough to continue living the lifestyle you were accustomed to. Evan brings up a great point about budgeting. Another thing too is like pay attention to what your kind of calendar year expenses are. In June and July, everyone wants to go out. You want to go do things, camp, vacation, go out for dinner, right? You can't compare your November expenses to your July. You should also be aware that the moment you step away from your job, your debt servicing or your ability to qualify for financing will significantly change. And therefore your strategy may need to change as well. When I left my job, your debt ratio is out the window. Like don't <laughs> even think about it. You have to recognize that. So, I mean, there's, again, there's two different routes you can take. You can do joint venture partnerships and get someone to bring the cash and qualify for the mortgage on, on you know, that's more of like the residential uh, kind of side of things. Or you can step up to commercial and do multi-family building where the building kind of qualifies uh, instead of yourself. This is why it's so important to leave your job when you have fully replaced or even exceeded your current salary, as opposed to leaving before hitting that goal. I see novice investors leave their jobs early with the expectation that the additional time that they can dedicate to their real estate portfolio might be able to make up the difference in their lost earnings. But listen to Evan's advice when it comes to that idea. Saying, oh, I'm gonna be a big shot in the next year when I leave my job. Well, maybe, like maybe, but you don't know. So I just, yeah, I wanted to do it off of actuals. Um, it's not that I didn't think about continuing and having success, but you can't base that off of anything. Banks don't care about what you want to do or hope to do. It's just, it's just what you have. Now, to go off of that, though, when I left my job, I actually didn't meet the quota I wanted to hit. In a weird way, I kind of just knew it was time. As promised, Evan lays out his best piece of advice for those interested in becoming a full-time real estate investor. Realize if what you're doing to produce that income is sustainable in the long term, or if you have somewhere else to go to, to utilize your skills in another kind of venture in real estate. As a full-time real estate investor myself, my biggest piece of advice is to be patient. I probably stepped away from my full-time income a little too soon and that created some unnecessary stress. At the same time, it was the push that I needed and not having that safety net to fall back on was something that motivated me to be as successful as I could be as a real estate investor. If you're interested in making the transition to becoming a full-time real estate investor, one thing that did change that for me was having the right education and the team behind me to make that happen. If you're looking to up your real estate investing knowledge, I'm running a series of trainings starting in September of 2021. So for more information on the various offerings and pricings, check out my website at darrenvoros.com. If you have questions about anything related to real estate investing or becoming a full-time real estate investor, feel free to drop those in the comments section below and check back here every Tuesday as I release a new video. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I release regular tips and tricks related to to real estate investing. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.